Response to questions for oral answer. Question number one, in the name of Simon O'Connor. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Finance and asks, how does Budget 2014 contribute to building a more productive and competitive economy through the government's business growth agenda? Honourable Stephen Joyce. Uh, Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Minister of Finance, Budget 2004 contains a number of uh, range of initiatives across the business growth agenda. As everyone now knows, Mr Speaker, we have entered a period of significant growth for the New Zealand economy that is lifting job numbers and incomes. The challenge for the business growth agenda is to keep reducing some of the longer-term capacity constraints in areas like skills and innovation so the New Zealand economy can continue to grow at a faster rate than it has in the past for an extended period. One important area is building our international markets. Budget 2014 provides funding of $69 million over the next four years for New Zealand trade and enterprise to boost its presence in China, South America and the Middle East and to lift the number of companies it works with intensively from 500 to 700. Supp supplementary question, Simon O'Connor. How does Budget 2014 contribute to lifting research and innovation in New Zealand? Honourable Stephen Joyce. Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Minister of Finance, the Budget continues this Government's uh, long and extensive initiatives in the research and development area. Uh, this Budget contains an additional $58.6 million over three years for additional contestable science and innovation funding, which will take the total annual Government investment to $1.5 billion by 2015-16. High quality scientific research is, of course, critical to increasing innovation and economic growth. The budget also contained two tax measures to benefit businesses investing in research and development. Loss making start up companies will be able to cash out all or part of their tax losses from RD expenditure, while all businesses will be allowed tax deductibility for RD black hole expenditure that is currently neither deductible nor able to be depreciated. These tax changes will help us meet our goal of increasing business R&D to 1% of GDP. Question? Supp supplementary question, Simon O'Connor. How does Budget 2014 contribute to lifting the skill levels of the New Zealand workforce? Honourable Stephen Joyce. Uh, Mr Speaker, the Budget contains additionally nearly $200 million of initiatives over the next four years. Tuition subsidies for science, agriculture and selected health sciences will be lifted which comes on top of funding increases for engineering and science in previous budgets. Additional funding also means the Government will be funding 10 centres of research excellence from 2016-17 up from the six that were recently selected through the competitive process. The Government will also spend an additional $20 million expanding the very successful apprenticeship reboot programme by an additional 6,000 places, bringing the number of places to 20,000. Supplementary question, Simon O'Connor. Thank you, Mr Speaker. How is the government's successful share offer programme helping to pay for new infrastructure investment as part of the business growth agenda? Honourable Stephen Joyce. Well, Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Minister of Finance, the government's successful share offer programme raised around $4.7 billion, which is being invested in new priority public assets and infrastructure without taxpayers having to borrow this money from overseas lenders. Budget 2014 allocated another $1 billion for these investments, which will be made through the Future Investment Fund. That brings allocations from the fund so far to almost $3 billion, leaving nearly $1.7 billion in the fund for spending on more new assets in the next two budgets. Future Investment Fund allocations in this budget included $67 million for the new Grey Base Hospital on the West Coast. $172 million for upgrading and building of new schools, including the Pegasus Bay School in North Canterbury, $75 million for Christchurch housing, $40 million for Crown and Irrigation, and $30 million for the Hobsonville housing development. All of these things would not have been possible unless we'd had the program for mixed ownership model. Supplementary question, the Honourable David Parker. If, as he claims, the economy will become more competitive and productive, why is it that imports are forecast to grow far faster than exports for the next four years, what? increasing our external deficit to $16 billion by 2017? Honourable Stephen Joyce. Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Minister of Finance, I think the member needs to look at the progress that this government has already made, despite... 
despite various prognostications by certain commentators, including the Treasury. This year, this year the balance of payments deficit is down to three and about half, three and a half percent of GDP, and forecasts to go lower. And it may the member thinks that it's as good as it gets, but it's a heck of a lot better than eight percent when he was in charge. Question number two, Dr. Russell Norman. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question to the Minister of Finance: Does he stand by all his?